about the specifics uh, also. Um, we were founded here in 1981 and our mission immediately became one of hospitality. You saw those beautiful doors that most of you walked through, those front doors. And we looked at those as symbolic of our desire to welcome everyone. So people of diverse faiths and cultural backgrounds began to come here right away. And uh, we're kind of proud of that. I think it was just grace that enabled that to happen. It wasn't just Catholics that uh, came here. And right away, we started programs that were uh, really of the Tese prayer in France. The brothers came here and started Tese West. And we've been holding the Tese prayer around the cross every first Friday since 1982. And we've never missed. We've held it every first Friday at 8 o'clock. And I'd say about 200 people continue to come and find it a, a way of deep prayer. And then the East-West Meditation Program, we were so fortunate to have a friend, Father Thomas Hand, who was a Jesuit who spent 27 years in Japan. And he began to study under a uh, Buddhist priest. And he is, was an expert in East-West Meditation uh, and so he started a program here, and that's been going on ever since. That was in 1983 he came. And uh, so if you go down to the next floor, you'll see a meditation room, a meditation hall that has zafus and all of the uh, places to sit, a lot of chairs for us elders. And, <laughs> and there's a beautiful altar in front, and it's a uh, Christ as Buddha, and he uh, prepared that whole altar, altar with a, another Buddhist priest. So it's, again, East-West combining. And then as you were mentioning the training of spiritual directors, it soon became evident that people were coming here in order to try to get closer to God. and. We ran out of people who were trained spiritual directors. We only knew about five or six at the time. And so we said, well, the only answer is, is to start a training program. So that's what we did. And we have been continuing to do that every year. Uh, and it's a three-year program, very intense. And people get well-trained, they really do. Programs of body consciousness, meta, uh, massage, healing touch, all of those kinds of things, Reiki, these are all here and we honor them. And we think it's very important for us to realize that our bodies are part of our way to God and that we can uh, really uh, profit by having a really healthy, relaxed body in order to pray well. And let's see what's next. Programs that support spiritual growth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you have passed that uh, flyer rack on the way down here, on the way, you know, it, it was just before you got to the stairs that came down, there must be about 50 different flyers there of all the programs that are being held here. And I'll just say what they are. Here's one, East-West programs, Teze, I already mentioned that. These are healing touch sessions, body consciousness, private and directed retreats. This is the Mercy Center Labyrinth brochure. This is prayer group for cancer patients. And, and then there are all kinds of things that are just like one-time things that are, are put on. These are ongoing. It's very rich. 
and so we have these programs that support spiritual growth. Also, we realize that our environment, the beauty that surrounds us, helps us pray. And so the outside environment with these gorgeous oaks. When we bought this property in 1924, mm. these trees <laughs> were here. And that is really, I guess, the primary reason we chose it was the beauty that's here. And it's 40 acres of uh, this uh, Mercy Center. And um, also, You'll notice some of you were walking around a little bit earlier. We feel it's very important that really good art is here, not you know, uh, plastic flowers and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so this good art you'll see everywhere. And, uh, but now I'm going to get a little history, and then you can ask questions. I'm going through this rather quickly because I think your questions are the most important part of this. So our history really goes way back to 1831. At that time, a woman, uh, she was kind of a wealthy woman in Ireland, Catherine Macaulay, founded the Sisters of Mercy. Now she had no intention of becoming a sister. She had founded a place for uh, people that needed a place to coming off the street, and also uh, young girls coming in from the country who were looking for work and couldn't find any, then they became prostitutes. But she was, uh, and then she would uh, uh, teach them a trade and all that kind of thing. Anyway, so, but she realized early on that her work wouldn't continue unless some kind of permanent group was doing it, and at that time, the permanent group were sisters. But at that time, sisters were all enclosed. They were not walking around on the streets like we do. And so hers was the group, first order that did that. They were not living in their cloisters. They went out on the street and went and helped the poor and the homeless and those in poverty. And very interesting thing is Catherine died 10 years after she founded her community. And already the order had spread over the English speaking world. And in 1854, we came to San Francisco. December 8th, we landed at the foot of Jackson Street. And <laughs> There was nobody to meet them. The bishop had invited them, but he failed to meet them. So they kind of found, found their way to some daughter of charity place and had breakfast or something. Uh, so anyway, oh, it's a lot of history here. Uh, in 1906, well, I, well, let me say this. When they came to San Francisco, right after that was a cholera epidemic, and they, um, were asked by the county to staff the county hospital, San Francisco County Hospital. And they did that for a year or two, but the county never paid their bills. And so they said, okay, if you're not gonna pay our bills, we're not gonna do this anymore. And they never got their bills paid, so they said, sorry. And they founded another hospital, St. Mary's Hospital. You know that in San Francisco, near the Golden Gate Park. Uh, let's see, 1906 earthquake. Uh, St. Mary's Hospital was destroyed and they moved down in tents to the park and to take, take care of people out there. And at, then at that time, there's where our headquarters was at St. Mary's. And they moved to Fruitvale, Oakland where we had a home for the elderly and they set up shop there. In 1924, well, in the, they began to think, you know, Fruitvale, Oakland is not where we want to be. Uh, we want to be uh, on, in the west part of the bay, and we want to have our headquarters there. There were two places they looked at. One was this beautiful 40 acres. The other one was property right next to Lake Merced. 
We always say that uh, if they had chosen that property, we would have all been depressed <laughs> because there's so much <laughs> and terrible weather out there. Anyway, uh, so in 19, so we moved to Burlingame in 1924, and you'll notice there's a mansion up at the top of the hill. That's where our high school is now. And we've added wings, you know, for classrooms and all of that. But the sisters lived there until 1931. And uh, there's still pictures of the chapel being in our uh, auditorium up there and all of that. Anyway, so our first building was the one you came in. And it's very confusing around here because unless you're here when all the buildings were built, you don't see how they connect with each other. So let's say, okay, you know where the main building, the first building was. North of that, we built a big wing for more home uh, rooms for sisters. And then on this side, we built a novitiate, which is a formation for young women who want to come into the order. Because at that time, that we did the second and third buildings and the college over here, um, it was right after the Second World War, this weird thing happened where people began to come into religious life and the priesthood in droves in the monasteries. I don't know what it was, but I guess they felt the World War II was so terrible that they wanted to live a life that would prevent that from happening. I don't know. But anyway, it did happen. And so uh, that's why in the 1960s, uh, we built this whole section here and the college over there. And, and they were filled up with young women wanting to become sisters. Well, very interestingly, right after that, Vatican II happened. And Vatican II kind of opened the doors to sisterhood. And they said, you know, you need to, first of all, wear clothes that are not going to scare people. You know, little, boy, little kids on the bus, I remember, what's that, mommy? You know, we'd come in there. I did wear the old habit. Uh, and so uh, there was this, um, I understanding that you need not become avowed religious in order to do really good work in the world. That's what some of these people were after, and they thought, well, as a woman, the only way I can do it is becoming a nun. So, uh, places emptied out. <laughs> people weren't coming as much. And that was right after we built the darn place. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, in the 70s, we were kind of distressed because there was this wonderful space over here and not much use was being made of it. And so we said to ourselves, we sent up something around to all our community, which were about 400 people, and said, what do you think we ought to do with this space? And what came up was, let's have a spirituality center here. And that's what happened. So in 1981, that was the opening of the doors of Mercy Center. And in 1982, I came here and was in charge of housekeeping and liaison with the kitchen and all those exciting things. <laughs> Never thought of myself as a spiritual director. But people began coming to me and saying they wanted to talk about God or talk about prayer. And I thought, that's not me. So I sent them to somebody else. But at times, there wasn't anybody else, and I did listen. And I began to realize I loved. It did something. It was just so beautiful to listen to people in their, their search for God. So I trained and became a spiritual director. And give retreats and workshops and all of that. So this was the
the history of what uh, our Mercy Center is all about. So, are any questions? I just 